Hi everybody. Just wanted to make a fairly brief video in response to some questions that have come up on the forums uh, about working with the skeleton tool and also how to handle some of the issues that may arise uh, and correct some problems with joints. So let's begin by going into setup mode. I'm going to go over here to the commands and skeleton. And for the tool properties, uh, for the skeleton, I've got add a joint, compensation and intersection, and symmetry off because I'm going to be doing the spine. So, uh, but I just very quickly will show you what a couple of these options do. So, if we were to put a couple joints in here, um, normally you can you can click and drag on a joint to move it around, and the reason that's not moving the joint downstream of it is because we have compensation on. If I turn compensation off, then as we move a joint, it will move all the joints after it. So I'll put compensation back on. Intersection tries to position the joint in the center of the uh, mesh, which it's done successfully here, but uh, not in this case. So it doesn't work 100% of the time, uh, but I figure hey, it's worth a shot. Uh, the next thing that we're looking at is symmetry. So my character is symmetrical across the x-axis. So if I select a joint and start creating new joints, as you can see, it'll build it symmetrically across that axis for both sides of the body. Okay, I'm just gonna delete this. Um, hierarchy and we'll start again afresh so let's go ahead and create the spine and I'm gonna leave it again turning off the symmetry and we've got add joint and we'll go ahead and just really quickly uh, lay out the spine. Now if we come over to the side we can see that again the intersections worked a little bit here but not in all cases so I can click and drag to move my joints back to where I want them to be. I'm actually not trying to put my spine perfectly down the middle of the body. Yeah. So you can see we've been able to correct for that pretty well. Now you can also, if you wanted to, um, position things numerically. So if I go to the front view, you can see here we're not we're not perfectly down this center line. So if I select this joint, I can come up here into the numeric values and enter zero, for example, and click on this one enter zero to move that exactly on the x-axis to be perfectly honest with you I mean when you're out by if you know less than a millimeter at this scale of character I don't think it's gonna make a huge difference um, most of the time when you're doing the character rigging uh, so long as I'm even eyeballing it pretty close it works fairly well especially since Although your set, the joint is going to set where your transform is taking place from, don't forget that a lot of the effect too is going to depend on how you're weighted, because the weighting is going to control how the vertexes uh, do the deformation. So I, I, th I do think there's kind of a, a bit of a point of diminishing returns in trying to get things, you know, perfectly mathematically accurate, uh, unless you have some compelling reason to do that. Okay, let me just come back into perspective. We'll take a look. So this would be pretty good and definitely workable. But so I can drop the skeleton tool and we can take a look at this. I can just double click this uh, joint hierarchy. Uh, but one thing we would wanna do is correct these rotations. Um, because you can see that they're aligned differently. So some of them, the 
green or the Y is facing forward. Some, sometimes it's facing towards the back of the character. So we're going to want to correct that. But first, I'm going to show you another way to correct joint problems by creating some joint problems. So I'm going to just select just the root joint again, select skeleton, and we can go back into editing our skeleton. And again, I could move, I can move things around. And I'm just going to move a couple of these joints. And the reason I'm doing this is because one of the comments on the forums was from a user was that they can't do the kind of editing that I'm showing you here accurately. For some reason, it's jumping around on them. Uh, again, I would suggest deselecting intersection if you're having that problem. But if it still uh, won't behave for you, you can get around it. And the way you can do it is however your skeleton ends up that you've roughly put in with the skeleton tool, you can edit it now uh, just using Moto's. So I'm out of the skeleton tool. Uh, just using Moto's normal transform tool. So you can select it from W key. Now the important feature here is this option for child compensate. What child compensate will do is I can now move this joint around. Um, as you can see here, I can move it around. Um, and it won't move the other joints around it much like compensate that we saw in the skeleton. An important note to remember is that when you're done doing uh, your transforms with the move tool, you should uncheck the child compensate because I often forget to do this. And then when later I'm trying to do regular uh, transforms in Moto, it freaks me out that it's not behaving correctly. So I'm just going to select world axis and I'm going to move it. Now the problem this is going to create is that my uh, rotation is not going to follow it. So I'm creating a second problem. And to be honest, one of the reasons I'm creating this problem is so I can show you how to fix it in case you ever run into this. Okay, so what have we done? Well, as you can see now, our Z axis is no longer aligned with our bone. And that's bad. Because we definitely want uh, that Z axis is the, the axis that for sure we want aligned uh, pointing down the bone so that we can get our transformations working properly. But as you can see by the way I've done it, it's messed up uh, because I move things in world space, it's messed up all of our alignments. So how do we fix that? Well, we come into commands and we can say align and we can say, I want the item to align down its Z, -ax, Z direction, X axis. If I do that, there we go. I'll do it again. You can see it's going to pop, put it back, Z facing down the bone. Again here, it's all wonky. Fixed it. Here, aligned it. I think from then on we're we're good. Yeah, we're back to good. Okay, so we've fixed our strange alignment. We've positioned things using the uh, trans Moto's transform tool instead of the skeleton editing, but you can do either one. So finally, what we're going to do is fix these uh, rotations to make them all consistently in the same direction. So to do that, we're going to use the rotation tool. I'm hitting E on the keyboard to get to it. And again, under the tool properties, you'll see it also has an option for child compensate, which means that we can do rotations and it won't affect any of the other joints uh, up or down the chain. So to just be able to see what I'm doing a little bit better, I think I'm going to align these. Let's see what we've got. Um, so these are all these are front. These are aiming back. I think I want them aiming aiming to the back. So that green is going to aim backwards, and our x direction is going to be out here to the right. So just to align it a little better, I'm going to look from the top view. I'm going to come in here, make sure I'm in a local uh, rotation, not in world rotation, and 
we'll just take this guy around. Because I'm from the top, I can see pretty accurately. I'm hitting the uh, arrow key, down arrow to go to my next joint. Um, that one's good. It could be a little bit better. around and that's our very top joint actually so we'll just doesn't actually matter on the top joint but um, I bring it in line with the others just so I find it more visually appealing so let's look at our whole uh, result now so now you can see we've got all of them aligned the same way looks nice and clean. Um, now the last step we're going to do is we're going to select all of our joints, which I've already done by double clicking on the root joint, and make sure you're in setup mode. And we're going to come down here and say zero all. And what that's done is now the setup mode uh, considers this basically the rest position for all of these joints and we will always be able to get back to this um, position rotation for these joints uh, by coming back into the setup mode and the other nice thing is when you go to animate you're now animating effectively from zero and that's all you have to worry about but for those who want to know what's happening under the surface if you come over here to channels you can see there's these extra channels that Modo's added called zero channels. There's a position zero, a rotation zero, and the values in here are what is storing um, those rotations and positions that we've that we've set. Uh, but what you actually will be working with when you animate is just the position and rotation. So you don't really have to worry about these uh, zero channels that are happening behind the scenes, but just to make you aware that that's, that's where that information is actually being stored. Okay, so now we'd be ready to continue on. For example, I could just select only the root joint, come back here into Skeleton Tool, turn on Symmetry on the X axis, for example. I could select this joint and say, okay, I'm gonna create my clavicle uh, up here, uh, create my elbow, wrist, and I own it to the hand. And as you can see with symmetry, it's creating both sides. I can take a look. Our intersection is actually working pretty well now. Um, so, but it's still, I tweak this a little bit back to, so that the IK has a direction it knows to bend. And the same thing if we wanted to create some, uh, some for the legs. Just pop down here, knee, ankle. Foot, toe. And as you can see, the intersection's working quite nicely at this point. I can slide that just a little bit forward. So again, we have an IK bend direction. And there you go. We we can, you know, build out our skeleton pretty quickly and efficiently. Now, again, at the end when I uh, select everything, you can see that our rotations um, looking actually quite good going down the arm. The leg's a little bit messy, so you would want to do that rotation trick we did previously to correct your rotations here. And then, of course, when you're done, select everything and zero it out, making sure you're in setup mode. And that's it. When you're all done, you're ready to bind your character and then exit setup mode and start doing your animations. So I hope you found this helpful and thanks for watching.